What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out Jim Cornette reviews Drew McIntyre versus Damian Priest, CM Punk interference at Clash at the Castle. I was definitely looking forward to seeing what Jim had to say about uh, um, this particular match and CM Punk's uh, involvement in it. So definitely wanted to see what he had to check out. Appreciate all of the support. We're gonna get right into this one. Should be a fun one, man. Anyway, now the time that we have all awaited has come. It's the main event for the other world title, the second one we've seen tonight out of five matches. But it's got Drew McIntyre in it. And boy, howdy. Uh, and poor old Damian Priest. We'll talk about his trip around the world in a second. But this was, you know, Priest is the heel. So he was booed more than he's ever been in his life, probably, because not only was he the heel, but also he's against the hometown hero who in this country would kind of be a heel. So the, the, the crowd was loud, and this benefited mm -hmm. this match somewhat, and then they just worked their ass off the rest of the way. But the, I like they, they had the decibel meter. Did you mm -hmm. see that for all these? That was a great idea. All these international shows where they're going in front of these crowds that are just going batshit insane because they never get to see this. They got to do that. Yeah. But I don't know how they how they do if they did it in Austin, Texas. I'm not. But nevertheless, <laughs> they had a good match. Um, I really enjoyed There that was match. a few things that I think Priest, he's trying hard, but still. I don't know how to explain it. He hasn't come all the way out of his shell or or found that last gear where you could see him in the goddamn ring in the 90s with Stone Cold, right? Mm. Which a lot of these other guys that have broken through to that upper echelon, you can. You can with Drew. You can with Punk. You can mm -hmm. with Cody. Yeah. You can with, with Gunther. Yeah. Uh, but work-wise in the ring with Priest, it's almost, but it's not, it, it's not quite. That's a fair assessment. I like what he said there. Like, a lot of these guys that he mentioned, you can see them working in an attitude there with some of the biggest stars that was known back then because of how they move in the ring, how they work their in-ring psychology. And I think Damian Priest, he's gotten much better since he's been world champion and the feud that he's been in, especially with Drew, I love what they've been doing with him. I still feel like there's more room to grow. He's going to get to that point. I hope so. But honestly, and this is a crazy thing to say, unfortunately, Rhea did get injured, but it kind of helped in a sense of Damian Priest finally looking like the guy that's running Judge Judgment Day, the leader. They kind of needed that for him, especially with him being the world champion, because with Rhea being a champion we all kind of just assumed and it was just kind of put out there that Rhea was the head of judgment day she ran things now Damian Priest has to run things and it it works it's building upon his character I love what they're doing with Damian Priest and uh you know we'll see how things play out with him going against Seth Rollins and money in the bank if they're gonna have him hold the belt or will this be it for him and Seth Rollins is just gonna be a potential transitional champion we don't know, um, but I will say this. I've, I've somewhat been enjoying his World Heavyweight Championship run. I know some people try to clown him and trash him. Me personally, I've been enjoying it. But everything that Drew does, he's the best he's ever been right now. Facts. And he moves great for a guy that size. But then if Priest was... Had Drew on the floor, and he was going to do one of those deals where he runs, and he steps up on the middle rope, and he flick cannonballs over the top mm -hmm. and lands on Drew McIntyre. And when he put his priest, put his right foot on the middle rope and put his weight on it, it fucking slipped off. The, those ropes, again, they're dodgy. I fucking hate them instead of cables. It could have been sweat, whatever. Yeah. But when he did that, he did the version of the hangman with his Oof. his ankle instead of his neck. Jesus, bro. And everybody was freaking out about, <laughs> you know, whether he broke his leg or he 
tore his ankle or whatever, he flipped forward at a high rate of speed Speedy, and yeah. almost went head first into the apron. Jesus, bro. It should have either knocked him out or broken his neck, but he was an inch off one way of doing that. And then he was tied there for a shoot, and the, the referee for a shoot could not untie him. Yeah, he couldn't get him out. Until you get back up and go back over the top rope the way you came, no human being is going to get you out of that goddamn rope. I can mm -hmm. I can promise you. So that's what when McIntyre realized that he was okay and he hadn't knocked his brains out or broken his leg, he started working with him again and he helped him in a working way, bringing mm -hmm. him over so that he could beat him. Mm-hmm. To get back over the top and get him untied. Yeah, because if y'all remember, he started stomping on him. It was like, you know, started hitting him because you would do that. If your opponent caught up in the ropes, you would stomp on him. Then, you know, obviously can't just keep stomping on the guy. Got to kind of help him out since the ref couldn't get him out. So that's why he said audibly, I, he can't win the match this way. You know what I'm saying? I can't beat him if he's hung up in the ropes. I got to beat him in the ring. So I got to help him. I like what he did there. Have you ever seen a bump like that in your life? I've never. I mean, I've seen people get caught in the rope going over. I've seen people trip. But again, like you said, the way he came around and just head first. It looked like head first. It wasn't a. I mean, it wasn't right there. It was from the distance. It got everything. But it looked like he got whiplash. It looked like he whipped his head right into the apron. Yeah, it, it was miraculous. <laughs> that he didn't have serious head or neck damage, not the leg. The leg was, you know, the leg was fine. The ankle wasn't going to go anywhere. It was right there in those ropes. Well, considering he wasn't decapitated, it actually played well into the rest of the match. Well, and, and he kept his ears, unlike Mick. That's the, sa that's the same thing. Mick did that with his neck. Mm -hmm. That's the hangman. Mm -hmm. That's where he lost the ear. That's what you're talking about. You couldn't get out yeah. of there. He couldn't get, he couldn't just slip out. He slipped out. He ripped his ear off. Whew. So anyway, uh, and Priest shook it off, and they had their match, and they went through the big yay-boo exchanges, and they did great false finishes. I won't mm -hmm. bore everyone with enumerating him, but they had big shit that they, you know, Priest did a hurricane run off the top rope, turned around into a fucking Claymore. So good. And then... <laughs> I got to admit, at first I was like, what the fuck? That was kind of the shits. But then I saw where they were going. When they the referee was in the corner and both guys were backing into the turnbuckle and the referee dove to the floor out of the way. Mm -hmm. But he, you know, he, he landed oh boy, it kind he. of. <laughs> well, he took that a dive. Alfred Neely bump. Well, he took it. He didn't even really take a bump. Is that he just jumped out on purpose and acted like he twisted his his goddamn ankle, <laughs> right? And I'm like, what the fuck? But then, as he was trying to get back in, that's when they both lurched into the ropes and knocked him wow, off the apron. Yeah. And then he took a bump into the fucking barricade and everything. And boom, okay. So now, Drew hits the claymore kick and covers. And the crowd is counting out loud, mm -hmm. like to 10. Mm -hmm. And then you see the long camera shot, the aisleway. So There's good. somebody running down. It's a second referee. So good. I bro. see the referee shirt. And then the handheld camera at ringside behind the second referee sliding in. You see his ass. You see his shirt. You see him count one, one two. two. And stop. Oh, it's so good, bro. And then Drew looks up and sees who it is, and then the camera on the other side in the perfect position. Perfect position. Sees that it's CM Punk. With the two. And he's held up the count. And so good. What the, oh my, and the people realize it's Punk, and they see him on the screen when they're in the cheap seats. And they stand up and face off, and Drew snatches Punk and gets a huge pop. And Punk calls off and kicks McIntyre in the balls, and the crowd goes bullshit, mm -hmm. as Pat Patterson used to say. <laughs> and then this Punk so good, gets bro. out, and the first referee rolls in, and Priest grabs fucking McIntyre and choke slams him one, one two, two, three. three. This yep. finish was worth the whole show to me. Yep. So that good. That not only so good, brilliant. Man. But it was shot like a fucking movie in one take in an arena in front of 20,000 people. Such good camera and work on this, too. And you could not, the 
they didn't spoil the reveal Mm -mm. that it was punk even when the the count was going on they had it framed perfectly well they had it framed perfectly for us at home the people in the arena didn't react until the camera switched too so they didn't even realize when the referee was running out there that it was punk well, yes, that's because it, in the excitement, he runs down real quick with his head down in a referee shirt and slides in, and he's got his head down, he's on his belly on the mat, and he starts counting. This They're looking fire, at the bro. pin. And then when he holds it up, that's when they look at the referee, and then they've got the screen to back him up because they got the camera shot, and everybody sees it's fucking punk. Did you see the backstage footage before this? No, I did not. They put it on uh, social media. It's CM Punk watching the monitor, and he sees what's happening, and he acts like, oh, I got to do something. And he sees the female referee there. He goes, quick, give me your shirt. You have an extra shirt? Oh, I love it. And she (laughs) says, why do you need it? He goes, I can't tell you. Just give me a shirt. And he puts it on, and he runs out. You know what? The only thing better would be if if he'd have pulled her shirt off, and she was left there in her bra or pasties. You've taken it too far. Pasties. yo. Pasties. Hey, Let's yo. think about that. If, if he'd have pulled the girl <laughs> referee's shirt off and she'd have been left in pasties. Jim, bro. Oh. Do the kids know what pasties are? Uh, they're not going to find out on wrestling anymore. Look, look, <laughs> look, look them up in, on, no on the kids. Google Don't machine. Don't look them up on no. the Google well, machine, kid, kids. Kids over 16. <laughs> okay. Well, let's or say 18. if your parents aren't home. Let's say 18 to play. Hey, so. Okay, yo. kids over 18, or if your parents aren't <laughs> home, tired. any age at, at all will be fine. Look up pasties on the internet. What? But no, that's a very, see, that's a nice little piece of attention to detail. And then look up tasty pasties. That's Whoa. <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, this time. And then look completely. up Memphis. <laughs> uh, uh. What are we talking about? Um, oh, we were talking about McIntyre. That's right. Yes, Damian Priest and <laughs> Damian Priest uh, 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 won the match, and Drew McIntyre was left with soggy balls there in the middle <laughs> of the ring, and and Punk has what? foiled him again. Uh, and it's... Punk found the only three Punk fans in the mm-hmm. building that he could celebrate <laughs> with. Then and he had his T-shirt on and everything. Yeah, he's done it again. He's yep. cost him again. Yep. That was that was what they had to do, but it yeah. was it was it was a perfect way to get out of it in the guy's home country. He yep. lost nothing. Yep, so good. Would bro. you agree that the next thing that happens between these two has to be Drew doing something to Punk? Punk's gotten over on him a few too many times since he's been injured. Well, but again, it depends on exactly what Punk's physical status is. Not only for when he can take bumps, but when they're going to have the match. You don't. Mm-hmm. Win- these these in and out stick and move hit and run when you least expect it i'll fucking fuck you some kind of way type of it, 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 they're keeping it fresh but until you know the date and the place and the time of the match i don't think you want drew to return the favor and get too physical on punk and and do something at that at you want to wait till you know you're going to be promoting it yeah All right. Well, your idea of him ripping her shirt. It's like everything, every one of your ideas is like out of an 80s teen movie. It's just like, well, just God rip her it. shirt off and she happens to have perfect breasts. That's, that happened in the 70s too, I'll have you know. <laughs> what the fuck? Not so much in the 60s. Those tits no. were a little droopy. Hey, yeah, yo. And in the 50s, they looked like bullets. What? Well, they didn't look like bullets. The bras looked like bullets. Well, the tits as a result, because the tits were in the bras. Well, that's a, well eventually, a, a I guess. Tit, a tit is like water. It expands to fill the shape of its receptacle. What, what are, are your we thoughts talking on the fact about? that Tony Storm gets to use the word tits on AEW TV? Does that blow your mind the word tits is allowed to be used openly I, on wrestling? Again, that was one of the seven, wasn't it? Yeah. I remember, you know, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits, it was the one that you ended up with. But I don't, it's not, it seems like that if you can break some norm of society or rule of broadcasting or do something that still might be considered unusual or not acceptable behavior everywhere that you wasted on throwaway comedy shit instead of having main event people use anything in some kind of way to be serious and draw money. Or just have a fucking guy that looks like a plumber with fuck on his t-shirt on television. 
<laughs> well, speaking of drawing money, it appears that CM Punk and Drew McIntyre are set to do that whenever they finally do something. And yeah. that was the pay-per-view. Five matches. The fans seemed happy with it. Yes. Oh, they but they couldn't wait on the way home. They were stopping at ATMs to get more money out to mail in to the fucking WWE to thank them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's I wanna, insane. I want to find out how big a crowd will support how few matches. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see, can they get a building filled for two matches? <laughs> it depends. If the right two matches, I bet they could. On the cool. And then back in the old days, as in the early 70s, the Memphis Mid-South Coliseum could sell out on a three-match card. That's crazy, bro. I'll have you know. And they got a lot of them, too. The problem was the promoters had too much money, so they said, all right, we need more wrestlers, more people to give money to. <laughs> hey, man, on the cool, WWE, they, they adopted the less is more. You don't, me personally, a cool medium is six matches, but I'm okay with the five match format, bro. The only time I feel like it should be more is obviously like SummerSlam, the big pay per views, depending on what situation. Obviously, WrestleMania. Um, I think next year, SummerSlam is going to be two nights. So, you know, I can understand that. But me personally, I'm okay with it. I kind of got burnt out on the seven to eight match format because a lot of those matches didn't feel important anyway. You gave them 10, 15 minutes. You can see that on Monday Night Raw. You feel me? So I'm okay with it. But it was cool to see, you know, his opinions on what happened with CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, and Damian Priest, man. Uh, the conversation definitely took a turn because it's Jim Cornette. But either way, I definitely love what they were talking about here, man. So comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys excited to see what they're going to do with Drew McIntyre and CM Punk? I do think even though Drew said he quit on Monday Night Raw, they're going to be in Chicago. You know Drew's going to pop up. CM Punk's going to be on SmackDown. I can't wait to see the crash out fully happen. I do think the crash out is going to start there. But appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K and I'm still here in Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.